What's up YouTube, it's Samara, and if you are new to this channel, welcome to the channel where you get Samara That World. Today we are going to talk about the top 10 things I wish I would have known before traveling long term. And if you guys are new, please give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and subscribe. And you can also comment below if you guys want me to make any specific videos, and I'll go ahead and do that in the future for you. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright you guys, so the number one thing I wish I would have known is to not pack so many toiletries. I know this seems obvious but really don't pack too many toiletries because it ends up just weighing down your bag and I can pretty much guarantee you that wherever you go you're gonna be able to buy toiletries unless you have some very specific brand of toiletry that you absolutely need to bring then I would recommend getting the toiletries in other countries and there are a couple of products that I am glad I brought with me from back home and there are things I definitely regret bringing with me I'm not gonna get into that in this video but if you guys want to know what those specific products are that I feel like you absolutely must bring with you then stay tuned because I'm either gonna post that in a future YouTube video or a future blog post so if you are interested in that go ahead and also subscribe to my blog so that way if I do end up posting it on my blog you can get that information Number two is don't buy your flights too far out in advance, especially if you're traveling long term, because you may end up wanting to change your plans. As you go along, you're going to find that people are going to give you different recommendations and you may end up being in a country that you really like and that you want to spend more time in. So it's important that you give yourself flexibility in your scheduling. So that way, you know, you don't end up buying a flight and having to leave a country way earlier than you want to, because that ended up happening to me while I was in Africa. I ended up buying a flight to Italy like far out in advance and I regret that because because I really loved being in Africa. I wanted to spend more time there and specifically South Africa and I didn't get to do everything I wanted to do so I really wish I wouldn't have bought that flight so far in advance and I would have just kind of gone with the flow because even if you end up deciding that you are good with a country, you've seen everything you want to see and you want to move to the next country, even if you can't leave the next day because the flights are too expensive, you can always wait a week or two and if you really like a place, you're probably not going to mind staying there for a little bit longer and it's better to have felt like you left a place seeing everything you needed to see than leaving like ah, I didn't see everything I wanted to see so yeah don't plan your flights out too far in advance give yourself flexibility on that because that's honestly something I wish I would have known and wish I would have done number three is I wish I would have known what kind of traveler I am I really had no idea before I left and I kind of figured that out as I went along but if you have an idea of what kind of traveler you are you're gonna want to take that into account when you go travel because it really is going to dictate how you travel are you someone Someone who's okay with taking overnight buses are you okay with staying in hostels or do you need more luxury are you someone who needs to go to the gym like I wish I would have known that I would have wanted to go to the gym so I could have saved a budget for that so all of these things are important so not only can you plan your trip and avoid going to places that you really don't care to go to but it's also important because then you can budget accordingly and number four actually goes along with knowing what kind of traveler you are because if you are someone who is like me and you prefer nature and you prefer doing activities where you're going to be out and about and doing physical activity like scuba diving or whitewater rafting, you might find that Europe is pretty overrated. At least that's kind of how I felt. When I first started traveling, I thought I was going to love Europe and that I was gonna spend all of my time there. And I kind of regret that. I regret spending as much time as I did there. Not because Europe doesn't have value. For some people, they're really going to appreciate their time in Europe. But for me, things kind of all started to blend in together and I also wasn't really spending money there because it's very expensive. I just wish I would have known that I was going to love Africa and Southeast Asia as much as I did and if I had known that I would have spent a lot less time in Europe and more time in these countries where natural beauty is more prevalent. You know you go out and you see nature and you can do fun nature based activities. Also Southeast Asia is a lot cheaper than Europe so that's another reason why I kind of felt like Europe was overrated because it's quite expensive for the budget that I was on so I couldn't really do much other than walk around. Now if you are someone who's very into history or art or museums then Europe might really be a great place for you but once again you need to consider what kind of traveler you are. Just because someone says Europe is great doesn't mean you're gonna feel that way. Personally for me I wish I would have known that I would think it's overrated because then I would have spent more time in other countries that I found more interesting. Number five kind of goes along with what I've already been saying which is to know what kind of traveler you are but take recommendations 
with a grain of salt because you're gonna meet a lot of travelers who are gonna recommend things that you should do. That doesn't mean you need to do all of them because ultimately this is your money, right? So when I first started traveling, I was going very much with the flow. I was like, I'm just gonna do whatever anyone recommends to me because maybe it's worth it. And I ended up spending money on things that I kind of wish I wouldn't have spent money on because they really just didn't fit with me and what I was passionate about, what I wanted to do and my personality. So that's what I mean. Take things with a grain of salt, you guys, because I'll give you guys a pretty funny example. I was actually in Florence and Florence is one of those cities that some people really love. To be honest, I wasn't actually a huge fan of Florence. It doesn't mean I didn't like it, but it just wasn't one of my favorite cities. But there was actually a point where I was sitting down, I was eating dinner, and there was a couple sitting next to me, and they were a little bit older, but I started talking to them about just, you know, oh, what are you guys up to? And the woman was just telling me how she had gone and seen the statue of David, and that it's an absolute must. Like, you have to see the statue of David. She was just telling me that when she saw it, she was just, you know, her breath was taken away, and she just was like, this was the most amazing moment of my life. And just talking the statue of David up very highly, and saying like, you need to go see the statue of David. So I was thinking like, okay, I need to go see the statue of David because clearly this woman is saying that it's breathtaking. So I went to go see the statue of David. I spent about three hours in line waiting to get into the statue of David while it was raining and I paid money to get in. And to be honest, you guys, when I went in there, I was kind of like, <laughs> well, I guess this is it. It's literally like what I was thinking. It's a statue. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not really into Renaissance art or history or sculptures So that's probably why it didn't have that same emotional impact on me. Okay for me It was really just a statue and once again, I'm just not into Renaissance art and history So for that woman it was probably really amazing to be able to see that statue in person because she had background about Renaissance art and sculptures and history and appreciated that and was able to have an appreciation for that So what I'm trying to say is is that just because it had that effect on her it doesn't mean it was gonna have that effect on me and I probably should have known that because I already knew I wasn't really that into Renaissance art and history so yeah I basically spent money on something that I could have spent money doing something else that I would have personally liked so yeah that's what I mean you guys take the recommendations with a grain of salt once again you guys this is your money so you need to be a little bit more choosy about where you go you might find that a recommendation that someone gives you is something that you'd never thought about and you're like wow that looks really cool and you'll probably really like it but if it's something that you know you're probably not really gonna like, then you don't have to do it. So the previous point I made brings me to my next point, number six, which is to research. Because once again, you'll get recommendations on where to go and what to see, and if you don't research it, you might go and end up spending money on things that you really didn't care to see or do. Because once again, everyone's different, their personality is different, what they're into is different, and there was a couple of countries that I went to that you know I had heard raving reviews about, people were so in love with this country, and I felt like I had to see it simply because people had said good things about it and then when I got there I just didn't feel the same way and that's because I didn't research I didn't research much about that country the things you can do there and I kind of was just going really with the flow and then I would get there and think hmm this isn't really my vibe okay so if I had researched I probably would have already known yeah this isn't gonna be my vibe and I'd rather spend my money going somewhere else so yeah do your research number seven is I wish I would have known how popular motorcycles are in Southeast Asia pretty much everyone gets around on a scooter there so if you're planning to go to Southeast Asia you might want to consider getting your motorcycle license in your home country including an international license I wish I would have known that because yeah I mean it would have helped then I would have actually considered getting my motorcycle license in my hometown which I am now going to do but yeah it would have been nice to know that ahead of time number eight is a little bit more personal and I really don't know how many people it's gonna help but if it helps one person I'm good with that but number eight is basically the reality that you might not find love during your long-term travels and I know that sounds silly but with movies like eat pray love and all these romanticized movies sometimes the girl goes into it thinking she's gonna find her future husband that's not always the case I've actually met a lot of people on my travels women and men who had little like travel flings but they didn't necessarily end up with that person and that might happen for you you might meet people in the hostel or whatever that you end up liking and then you never see them again and you might have that moment where you're like oh I'm so sad I'm never gonna see them again but chances are you'll get over it actually I can pretty much guarantee you that you'll get over it and yeah there was only actually a couple of times that I 
had flings or whatever, like long, longer term flings with people. And that's because when you're traveling, you're moving around a lot, you know, it's really hard to meet someone if you only have a few days with them. And, you know, even the ones where I was with the guy a little bit longer, like for a few weeks, that still wasn't enough time to get to know him to the point where we're both going to be committed to like this long distance relationship. So is that to say that you won't find love while you're traveling? No, maybe you'll find someone, you'll meet someone and you'll both want to do long distance and it'll work out. But I definitely wouldn't go into your travels expecting that to happen because you're pretty much going to set yourself up for disappointment and heartbreak. So I'm just letting you guys know so you can protect your heart. Number nine is that even though you might be backpacking, backpacks might actually be overrated. There were a lot of times on my travels that I kind of wished I had one of those rolly suitcases because over time a backpack wears on you. It gets very heavy. It starts to hurt your back. You know, so yeah, there were times I really, really wish I would have had a rolly suitcase. So consider that before you travel. I know it's cool to have a backpack, everyone's doing it, but you might wanna actually consider just getting a regular carry-on suitcase because it might actually make your life easier. And I'll kind of do the pros and cons in the future in a future blog post. So once again, you guys, go check out my blog, subscribe to that so you can stay tuned. Number 10 is a little sneaky. If you have a student ID, bring it with you because if you go to Europe, there's tons of places that will give you discounts for being a student, which I wish I would have known because I still have my student ID from when I was in university and I still generally look like that. Like I could have passed right, for still being in school. And they would have just looked at it and been like, okay, she's in university and giving me a student discount, but because I didn't bring my student ID, did not get that student discount. So yeah, if you're still in school or just graduated, you should bring your student ID with you. Alrighty, you guys, that is all I have for you today in this video. As always, give it a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.